I lock my revolver in this drawer. I've not used it in a very long time. Hastings' photo album is very proud of his bag. Excellency, Sussex. Hastings tore the envelope. <sighs> it is not a good time. It is not a good time. Poor Mr. Poirot. Not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps? Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it is an easy one. Cheston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It is a bit dull having it Daily Flicker, July 30, 1935. ABC Affair, no progress. The alphabet murderer is still on the run. Ever since the police found the connection between the Bexhill and Endover affairs, the inquiry has barely progressed. In this issue, we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to Hercule Poirot. Unfortunately, they have not yet helped to find him. Daily Flicker, July the 26, 1935. The Bexhill Horror. Young maid strangled on the beach. Killer struck at midnight. It is not a good...
it is now the right time. Hello, Shep. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. a good time. I do not need to make a telephone call at the moment. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. These things, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. All the same, it really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Voila! It only took a minute. Poirot, you were right. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. Mon ami, it is a pleasure to be working with you again. I have missed you this past few years. Right, let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. 
I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Let us examine the characters in this word. 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 Let us examine the characters in Right. Let us compare this with the other letter. I don't see anything in particular. Let us look at another word. Let us examine the characters in this word. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark? The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? 
No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poro? You go, my friends. I will come soon. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than the pocket watch on which it was fastened. It is pointless. This place is very calming. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. The body is just in front of a bush, one of the only bushes in the surrounding area. I'm not going to leave now. I still have some clues to find. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical shape to Rhea, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. An ABC guide, the murderer's customary signature, covered in blood this time. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. I'm not going to leave now.
The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut his throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood over a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. The killer is a daring opportunist. He met Sir Carmichael at nightfall on this deserted path and took advantage of the situation. Impossible. You forget the trampled grass behind the bush. Ah, c'est vrai. It proved that he was waiting for his victim. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. I had better go up to Combside. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. It is now the right time. Hastings does not like very hot tea. He's going to blow on his cup for a good while before drinking. There is something very viril about him. There is something very viril about him. Franklin Clark is an adventurer, the sort of man that women like. There is something elegant about her.
She has good taste. Except perhaps in a choice of jewelry. Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. Hastings does not like very hot tea. He's going to blow on his cup for a good while before drinking. It is not the right time. It is not the right time. It is not the right time. My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. And uh, did people of the village know Sir Carmichael's habits? I don't know. It's possible. What were you doing last night? After dinner, I went to my bedroom. At 11 in the evening, the telephone rang. It was the police. I went to look for my brother. Was it a dark night? It was a new moon. I took a lantern. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. Oh, Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair. I have to help Miss Gray get her up. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. Traditional Chinese map. There are some very valuable objects here. Compass, point to the thals. Bronze and magnetite. A turtle. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collections. A dragon. A crane? Besides private collection, purchases since 1920. The catalog for Sir Carmichael. A tiger.
It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. The cardinal points. This book could maybe help me. Each cardinal point is associated with... Each cardinal point is associated with one animal and one color. In the middle sits the imperial dragon, and out of respect, all the others are turned towards him. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table.
It is blocked.
the position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Ernest Luggan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsite, Chuston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference. It is not the right time. She appears to be very flustered. Just a minute, please, Mr. Poirot. She's unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with Black Dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. You have a good knowledge of art history. 
acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. Did you have a good relationship with your employer? He treated me well, and I am sorry for his death. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. Tell me what happened last night. After dinner? Well, I did some sewing, and then I went to bed. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with them lanterns and they found the body. Why do you hate Franklin Clark? But why would I hate him? Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offence. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first kiss. Well done, mon ami. Well spotted. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. The killer leaves his hiding place on the left-hand side. He walks over the gravel on the path. The noise alerts Sir Clark, who turns around. No, Sir Clark was attacked by surprise. He could not see his assailant. Better think again, mon cher. Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. A killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. killer leaves his hiding place on the right-hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Oh, 
Just a minute. I'm getting dressed. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes. Indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. Mr. Cust, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning and my head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me as things. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah. Is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. The song says, Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this... The song says, Sometimes I love... Franklin Clark always seems at his, regardless of what he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. I hope to concentrate on my guests.
Donald is always on edge. Leave me alone. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he is trying hard to control himself. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for him? I wish to thank you all for coming. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? You are an intelligent woman, Mademoiselle Barnard, and I'm sure that you have already understood my intentions. You think that if we put our heads together, we might come up with something new? I am convinced of it. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name by chance starts with P. Must we go into that? No, of course. Not if it makes you uncomfortable. Come on, Mr. Poirot. I imagine we all feel terribly uncomfortable about these murders. It's true. We've to catch the killer, not be spared the gory details. Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but... I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard? Did your sister say if she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Why would she hide the fact from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... Is something bothering you, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see, I don't know if I can come to London just like that. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our grey matter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Churston. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Are you leaving Cheston for good? Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. It is now the right time.
It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. This poor woman is very ill. Please tell the nurse to hurry. Please. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. The Clark Residence, Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. It is not the right time. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. It's closed. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Lady Clark is in pain. 
I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Lady Clark is in pain. Lady Clark is in pain. Lady Clark. It is not. I do not need to make. Lady Clark. I am not going to leave. Lady Cl It's closed. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Please tell the nurse. It's closed. Lady Cl Lady Clark is in. Lady Clark. Lady Clark. Please tell the nurse to hurry. Lady Clark.
et risque d'escalade. Après The people who live here, your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. She's sleeping. I must find a way to wake her up gently. This subject will probably be useful to me. This subject will probably be useful to me. This subject will probably be The mechanism appears to be broken. Things will not be cross with me. This part appears to be working. This part appears to be working. This is where the comms go. Comb is preventing me from positioning this one. The 
the other comms are preventing me from positioning this. This couple appears to be having fun. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. Talking about ah yes, uh, uh, Thora Gray. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her, but for me she was nothing but a hypocrite. You're probably right, Madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased that I've. Oh. Convinced you. Well, I appear to have been wrong about Thora Gray. So you all agree how nice it is to be all of the same mind. Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at eleven o'clock, I saw her talking to someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Hello? Poirot, is that you? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key.
Have you seen Thora Grey again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive, I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. How am I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. Leaving the cord on the trunk. What a strange character Franklin is.
So, what is this sound? I should be able to open the trunk now. There we are. A pile of books, including one about dragons. Nothing interesting. Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Mr. Clark really has refined tastes. Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his trunk? I'll borrow it for a minute. A pile of books, including... pile of books, including one about an Allen key. It can be used in five positions. This skeleton key would be very useful for opening the locks I have not yet been able to. An Allen key. Thank you. 
Annalen Key. An Allen key, it can be used in five. Another screw. An Allen key, it can be used in five positions. An Allen key. An Allen key. It can. An Allen key, it can be. An Allen key, it can be used. An Allen key. An Allen key. It can be used in. A 
an Allen key. This engraving is not very easy to understand. I need to sort it out. It is blocked. It is blocked.
It is blocked. It is blocked. It is blocked. It is blocked.
It is blocked. It is blocked. It is blocked.
Franklin must really love his country to have an engraving in his trunk. I think I heard the panel above release. A signet ring? A signet ring with a code written on it. 1587. It may be useful to me. I do not need to make a telephone call now. Black Dragon's Curse. To Franklin, who will never grow up. January 25, 1928. Car Charlotte. Miss Thoragray Comside just Arsenic Trioxide Thallium. I think that signet ring should be placed here. The plates around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies.
the African kudu. The Alaskan Kodiak Bear. the Lion of Sumatra. I heard the sound of a mechanism. Strange way of protecting one's safe. Triangulating one's hunting sites on the map. These documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. A dozen gold sovereigns. Some shares for the... A dozen gold sovereigns. Eton College School Year, 1912-1913. School report for Franklin Clark. Charlotte Clark Comside, Churston, Devon. To Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury World. I wish you with all my heart a happy year 1935. At home, everything annoys. I opened the secret drawer of Carmichael and read a letter not addressed to me. In this letter... Dr. Logan tells my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, I know. But my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards, Char Sir Carmichael Clark, Comside, Churston. Dear Franklin, First, I... Things go... She had...
You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate. July 1920 February 19 Franklin appears to be very active Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman, a good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Four Chinese symbols are engraved on this padlock. I won't manage to do it randomly. Should I look at the rest of the facade, maybe? Hmm. It's only a hinge. Nothing in. Well, well. The characters engraved on this disc resemble those engraved on the pad. Like this. This character appears to be the right way round. Hmm. It's only a hinge. Hmm. It's only a... Like this. Like this, this character appears. That's it. This character appears to be very good. All the circles are facing the right way. What are they showing me? It's not the right code. Let us check the Chinese characters again.
At last, the cupboard is open. A net, flask, and rifles. Franklin is very well equipped. A net, flask. Traveling in China. The railway children in Nesbit. For Franklin. Gentle and wild. The door is locked. This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patient. No dust on the records from A to D. No known names. Lots of dust. No known names. Sir Carmichael's collection could... I see some papers that were not there the first time I visited. Ernest Logan. MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received, I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Valuers report property. Court and Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have... A dark dragon for a bright-haired maid. See. I've 
Paul Red is seeing similar daggers. Compass point to the thals. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong 1935. Traditional Chinese map. There are some very valuable objects here. Sir Carmichael's collection could write Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? Something makes me feel uncomfortable. Brown pellets. <laughs> Revolting. Ta -ta. The gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. This fountain makes a very relaxing sound. I would like to congratulate Clark's gardener. What symmetry!
May you have peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. This object would probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when... Let us now try and... Thor Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the pass, not far from the pop. <laughs> I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning. Comside's private collection. The catalog for. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shurston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burnt document? Yes. You just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. À ce soir.
Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. <laughs>